In 2022, MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred locked down clubhouses, sent warnings to the players' union, and threatened to fire MLB employees, all to keep baseballs out of the hands of this woman. This is Dr. Meredith Wills, and chances are MLB doesn't want you to know about her. Over the last five years, her research has made her one of the most important people in baseball, but it has also made her one of MLB's biggest enemies. If you follow baseball at all over the last few years, you've probably heard a lot about the juiced ball. Starting in the second half of 2015, MLB players started to hit more home runs than ever before. And at first, no one knew it was causing this shift, other than it had something to do with the baseball. At the same time, Dr. Wills was moving from a career in astrophysics to a new career in sports. Her unique background in baseball, physics, and data analysis made her the perfect person to research this, and her years of experience helped her become the biggest expert on the subject. Her first project was figuring out which changes in the ball led to the home run surge. At that point, it was clear that the baseball was different than it was in the past. In 2017, MLB players hit over 6,000 home runs for the first time ever. In fact, they demolished the previous home run record by 500 homers. And at the same time, pitchers were also having issues with the ball itself. They felt that it was smaller, harder, and more difficult to grip, leading to blisters and command issues across the league. In the press, Commissioner Manfred denied that the balls had changed. He pointed out that all of them were technically legal under the MLB rulebook. But for anyone who is familiar with the rulebook, this wasn't saying much. The truth was that MLB knew all about the problem. They just had no idea what was causing it. That was until Dr. Wills published her first findings in The Athletic. Her investigation was simple. She started by taking a bunch of baseballs from before and after 2015. Then she tore them completely apart, measuring each of them piece by piece. And in the process, she found a major change in the baseball that MLB overlooked. In general, there are two main ways to juice a baseball. The first is to make it denser, as a denser baseball bounces off the bat better. You can do this by either making the ball a few grams heavier, or by making it slightly smaller. And in this case, Dr. Wills found that the newer baseballs were slightly smaller than the older ones. The other way to do it is by making the balls more aerodynamic. When baseballs get used, the outside of the ball starts to wear down. The leather gets rougher, the seams get higher, and the ball starts to lose its shape. These things all add drag to the ball, which means that the ball isn't able to travel through the air as well. But if you're able to keep the ball rounder and more compact, you can get a few feet of extra distance on any fly ball. In this case, Dr. Wills found that the thread used to stitch the newer baseballs was almost 10% thicker. On the surface, this seems like a tiny change, but the thicker threads allowed the seams of the ball to stay tighter for longer. The result was a ball that was smaller, denser, and rounder, and these features allowed hits to go farther than they otherwise would have. At first, MLB seemed to be thankful for her work. In fact, it seemed like they were going the right direction on this. In 2018, they took full control over the baseball manufacturing process. And in general, it looked like MLB planned to bring balance to the game again. Ideally, this is where this story should have ended. But as Dr. Wills' research continued, things started to look more and more suspicious for MLB. And MLB became more hostile to her research. When MLB took over manufacturing, many expected the problems with the baseball to start going away. But the very next year, it became clear that not only was the juice ball still around, it was now worse than ever before. Once again, MLB players shattered the record for most home runs in a single season. And this time, it wasn't just them. When AAA teams started to use the MLB baseball in 2019, the league saw homers increase by 58%. A new study from Dr. Wills confirmed what the players already knew that the ball had changed once again. And as you'd expect, the main culprit was MLB's new production process. In particular, the new leather covers had a much smoother surface than the old ones, 
and changes to production made it so that the seams didn't stick out as much. This meant that even compared to the previous juice ball, this ball was way more aerodynamic. In other words, instead of actually fixing the problem, MLB was actively making it worse. Because of this, players became much more vocal about their frustrations, and guys like Justin Verlander accused the league of juicing the balls on purpose. Of course, MLB denied these accusations. In fact, they refused to even address the issue. According to them, the rise in home runs was due to hitters changing their approaches, and the ball had nothing to do with it. But when guys like Danny Santana are hitting 28 homers out of nowhere, it's hard for people to believe that. Since MLB was now fully in charge of making the baseballs, their words rang hollow for a lot of fans and players. And unfortunately, things would only get worse in October. After a season that saw the most home runs in history, homers were suddenly very hard to come by during the playoffs. Many long fly balls were now dying on the warning track, and even gold glove outfielders were misreading routine flyouts. And the data confirmed what the eye test was showing us. A study from the Cardinals analytics department found that fly balls in the postseason were now falling five feet shorter on average. As you might expect, Dr. Wills tried to get to the bottom of this, but this time when she went to collect her samples, she suddenly found that it was way more difficult than it was before. You see, most of her samples come from anonymous sources within MLB clubhouses, but in the 2019 postseason, Many of her sources found themselves with no access to the baseballs. Instead, MLB ordered them to be under strict lock and key to prevent any leaks. Wills described the environment in the clubhouse as an air of paranoia, and many of her sources worried that their jobs would be in jeopardy if they helped her out. But despite MLB's crackdown, Wills and her team still managed to get enough postseason baseballs for her research. MLB claimed that the postseason baseballs were all made in early 2019. If that was the case, they would be no different than the regular season baseballs. But instead, researchers found wild variations in how the postseason balls performed. And when Dr. Wills took them apart, she was able to figure out why. It turned out that some of the baseballs used in the postseason were actually made in 2018, not 2019. If you're wondering why this is such a big deal, you have to remember that the 2018 season had 1,200 fewer homers. That's a nearly 20% decrease compared to 2019. And if these balls were mixed in, it would explain the huge swings in performance that we saw. But of course, MLB denied these findings, despite the clear evidence going against them. This had sadly become the norm for MLB. Ever since they took over manufacturing, it seems like they've spent more time denying allegations than actually fixing the ball. And in fact, it seemed like they were more focused on waiting out the controversy. After all, if they could keep baseballs out of the hands of researchers, these stories would go away. And if these stories went away, they wouldn't have to keep playing defense all the time. This strategy mostly worked in 2020, as no fans could attend the games and MLB had full control over the baseballs. But in 2021, Dr. Wills would release her biggest bombshell yet. And in doing so, she put herself directly in the crosshairs of MLB. Around this time, MLB started to test a new version of the baseball, one that had less bounce, more drag, and lower home run rates. In 2021, MLB sent a memo to each team stating that this new ball was going to be used in the upcoming season. The implication was that this was going to be the only ball used that year. But when the home run rate continued to stay at 2017 levels, people began to be suspicious. And when players started noticing inconsistencies in the baseballs, alarm bells started going off. Once again, enter Dr. Wills. At the core of her research that year was a simple question. Was MLB using the same ball for the entire season? And as it turns out, the answer was no. While the new ball was present throughout the season, baseballs from previous years made up a significant part of the 2021 sample. This contradicted what MLB said in its initial memo, and it was yet another awful look for them. 
But in a shocking move, not only did they not deny the report, they outright confirmed it. When asked about the inconsistencies, MLB blamed COVID for production issues. In other words, they weren't able to make enough baseballs for 2021, and they had to add in older baseballs so that each team had enough. MLB claims that they informed the players about this situation. However, no communications were found that actually back up this claim. 10 players were interviewed as part of Dr. Wills' report that year. Every one of them said that they didn't know about the two different baseballs. If this is true and the players weren't informed about the change, this is gross negligence at best and purposeful manipulation at worst. Either way, it's pretty hard to overstate just how huge this confession was for MLB. And not just because it called their previous actions into question, it also played a huge role in the labor standoff that almost destroyed the 2022 season. When asked about the situation, Manfred pivoted to talking about the future. He stated that the new baseballs were going to be the standard going forward. And at last year's All-Star Game, he announced that every baseball used in 2022 came from the new manufacturing process. However, what he left out of that statement was that he made it much, much harder for someone to fact check it. Heading into 2022, it was clear that MLB had had enough of being exposed by Dr. Wills. Manfred sent a memo to the players' union warning them not to send out any baseballs for quote, third-party testing. He also threatened to fire any MLB employees who tried to help Dr. Wills with their research. And this was on top of the clubhouse lockdown that was already in place. But despite the increased scrutiny, Wills and her team managed to get their biggest sample yet in 2022. 204 baseballs from 22 different ballparks at different points throughout the 2022 season. And once those baseballs were examined, it became clear why Manfred was so worried about this. Dr. Wills published her latest findings on December 6, 2022, and the results from this report were three bombshells wrapped into one. For starters, remember when Manfred said that every ball used in 2022 is dead? Well, it turns out that that wasn't true. In fact, not only were the juice balls from earlier still in circulation, they were also found before and after Manfred's statement. But this wasn't the biggest finding in that report, because not only were the juice balls still in play, but a potential third type of baseball may have also been used. These were referred to as Goldilocks balls, as their key features put them right between the juice baseballs and the dead baseballs. In other words, these baseballs had more pop compared to the dead balls, but they were less easy to spot compared to the juice balls. This was already a massive finding on its own, but the biggest scandal to come from this wasn't the fact that these balls existed, but rather where they were found. You see, the juice baseballs popped up everywhere in 2022, and there wasn't really a pattern to where they showed up. This is incredibly important, because it gives MLB plausible deniability. If the old baseballs were randomly mixed in with the new ones, they're probably there by accident, and MLB can just blame it on issues with phasing them out. But this wasn't the case with the Goldilocks balls. Not only were they different from the regular baseballs, but they only showed up in three types of games. The first was the postseason and the World Series. And in fact, this is where most of these baseballs popped up. The second was the All-Star Game and the Home Run Derby, both of which feature special game balls. And the third were regular season games that had commemorative stamps on the ball. In other words, these baseballs only showed up during special games and events. Games where the baseballs were clearly marked differently compared to the regular season baseball. And of these scenarios, it's the third one that has caused the most uproar. At the end of the season, Albert Pujols and Aaron Judge were both closing in on major milestones. As such, MLB started using specially marked baseballs during their at-bats to authenticate them. Now, this isn't out of the ordinary. In fact, it's been standard procedure for MLB for decades now. But this year, it may have come with an extra twist. You see, the only Goldilocks balls in the sample that weren't from a special event came from Yankee games in August and September. Now, let me be clear here. 
because I don't want to hear about Judge or Pujols being cheaters in my comments. We do not know for sure if MLB did anything deliberate here. This could just be caused by differences in how these special baseballs are handled compared to the normal regular season baseballs, and not the result of some huge conspiracy. But even if MLB did change the baseballs on purpose, there's no reason to believe that Judge, Pujols, the Cardinals, or the Yankees knew anything about it. Nor do I think it actually made a difference. Pujols ended up with 703, and Judge's homers in the final stretch didn't really need a juice ball to get out. And if you don't believe me on this, our friends over at Baseball's Not Dead did a fantastic breakdown on the subject. If you want a deeper dive into this, I highly recommend checking out that video. That said, it should have been really easy for MLB to respond to this. On the juice balls, Manfred could have said that they were just holdovers that slipped through the cracks, and that they will continue to be phased out. As for the Goldilocks balls, all Manfred had to say was that all the baseballs were produced the same way, and he could have had his team investigate how the special baseballs were prepared. But of course, in true Rob Manfred fashion, Rob decided to put his foot in his mouth and kick an own goal with it. When asked about Dr. Wills' research, Manfred denied the results of her report. But when asked about how he knew the research was incorrect, he replied, Honestly, I can't help you with that one. MLB then tried to refute her research by conducting its own research. And surprise, surprise, MLB's researchers found nothing wrong with MLB's baseballs. Of course, these researchers refused to say if any of these baseballs were used in a game. However, they did admit that none of their samples were postseason baseballs. And since most of the Goldilocks balls were found in the postseason, it kind of makes that whole study a moot fucking point. In other words, MLB investigated themselves and found themselves innocent of any wrongdoing. But regardless of what MLB did or didn't do, it's no secret that the baseball has become a huge problem for them. Not just from a PR perspective, but also for the players who actually have to use them. It's something that pitchers have been noticing for years now. And in the case of the juice ball, it's something that is actively hurting their livelihood. But of course, MLB didn't address it until after the juice ball became known to the public. And this is why independent researchers like Dr. Wills are so important. Without her research, this issue doesn't get nearly as much attention. In fact, the only reason MLB has tried to fix it at all is due to the public pressure that has come from her research. And when you look at it that way, it makes sense why MLB wants to stop her from doing her work. Heading into 2023, Dr. Wills has made it clear that she will be continuing her work going forward. And if 2022 is any indication, Manfred is going to do everything in his power to stop that from happening. At this point, we don't know what she's going to find this season. But personally, I'm hoping that this is the year that MLB finally gets things under control. With all that being said though, I want to hear from you now. What do you think about the discovery of the Goldilocks ball? And do you think we'll see more of it heading into 2023? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, or you just want to learn more about terrible commissioners, you should check out this video about Manfred's predecessor. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.